One of the authors says that she swipes left on dating apps, quite literally, I assume, if people put conservative in their bio, and that her friend cried when she found out her new boyfriend voted <laughs> for <laughs> Boris Johnson of this parish. We'll be asking Albie and Benjamin what to do if a date starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> but now, let's meet our first guest. The writer and political commentator, Jeff Heath-Taylor, also contributed to the Times article, and he joins us now. Now, I assume you're not sort of outing yourself as a, a terrible date, right? This is just an ideological problem that you're highlighting. Uh, I assume you've got a, a healthy, budding love life. <laughs> mm. I'm actually off the, off the dating apps and, and not dating at all at the moment, um, focusing on other things. But um, I have, in the past, as I said in my article, um, Darren, in, in, the, in the past sort of 15 years as a, a right-leaning um, sort of person, I've, um, I have had my fair share of, of cancel, cancellations and so forth from, um, from potential romantic interests, from friends, from acquaintances, uh, because of my politics. And it has, I've noticed, often come from, from, from women. And how does that come to light? How do they come mm. to, to know about your politics? Um, well, you know, I've been involved in politics for 15 years. I've worked on several campaigns. I worked on the Brexit campaign. I worked on... Um, the Brexit Boris's, campaign. Boris's Shut campaign, Shut I know. So um, I worked on the Back Boris campaign, um, always as a in a voluntary capacity, but um, I, I can't help but talk about my politics quite early on. And also the fact that I write yeah. um, mm -hmm. for publications about my politics means that people find out very quickly what my leanings are. But, Jeff, don't you see it as you've dodged a bullet if a woman's like, she doesn't want to date you because of your politics? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I find intellectual debate really stimulating and, and mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. Um, I remember when I first moved to London, I lived with someone who, in fact, when I was, I was living with this girl, um, a friend of mine, mm. not a romantic interest, but during um, the Vote Leave campaign, and I was and she was campaigning for Remain and we lived together. Mm. And we would have, and we had a third housemate who would often hear us arguing and think we were sort of um, having, you know, at each other's throats and he'd come downstairs and we'd find us both with massive grins on our faces. <laughs> well, <Welcome laughs> glass of Saturday for us. Exactly. <laughs> got a, a glass of wine in our hands. And, yeah. you know, she would be tearing down, I think at one point I remember her flashing my posters down the loo as a joke. Wow. Mm. My vote leave posters. But we debated and we discussed and it was, mm. it was healthy and positive. Um, uh, but I have had uh, my fair share of, of unhealthy and... So what's changed then? What do you mm. think has changed? Because People of previous generations say that they haven't experienced such uh, what they would describe as intolerance mm. of different views. Do you think that we are becoming more tribal? Totally. Yeah, we're definitely becoming more tribal. You know, and and I, as I said uh, in my article, you know, I I try and make light of my politics sometimes, but but a lot of people, especially on the left, can't take a joke. So mm. I made a joke. I, I mentioned in my article about uh, you know me. Joking with with a guy I met at a um, at a party. This was uh, just a, a friend's friend, and I was chatting to him, and I made a joke about my um, the fact that I like J.K. Rowling, and he cancelled me, and he told the birthday girl, and she asked me to leave the party. Mm -hmm. like, you know, um, Arby, have you ever had any experiences like that as a conservative? Uh, no, I haven't, but I have met people who have said they'd never kissed a Tory mm -hmm. and then the situation has been quite different by the end of the evening. But what I would say is that I do host a podcast called the Never Kissed a Tory podcast, mm -hmm. named after that Labour slogan, Never Kissed a Tory. And the left really do make a lot of hay out of this, but the right don't. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, I think it goes back to cancel culture and, and, and cancelling free speech. Mm. The left... The, the right, and especially small C conservatives like me, who believe in you know individual liberty, freedom of speech, mm. and so forth. I I'm a great believer in, in discussion and debate. Whereas I think I think the left, and it's interesting that that we've seen this gender divide. I think the left can often emotionalise things more, mm. and and so they'll they'll and and maybe that's a girl thing, maybe it's just a left thing. Mm. But they will um, they see my views as an attack on them personally. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed a lot of people on the left, when I share my views, see, them, see me as attacking them mm -hmm. rather than attacking their views, which is why they cancel me rather than discuss and debate with me. All right, we spoke but... earlier about left-wing jokes. Let's bring one in. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you make of all of that, then? Uh, look, first of all, the stock image of a person wearing Never Kissed a Tory T-shirt is a 19-year-old me, <laughs> which, <laughs> which gets reprinted every single conference season in the paper. And can you confirm you've never kissed a Tory? I, I've, I've, my first kiss was a Tory. <laughs> <in fact>. oh. <laughs> I started as I mean to watch... But, but look, 
I, I'm afraid I think this is self-indulgent, grandiose nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think the reason you can't get a date is because you're right wing. I think it's because you are thrusting your views on people at the first opportunity. It could be that, it could and be so that. <laughs> in your article, you talk about how you just met someone and immediately started yeah. telling them what your views were. When you walked in here, the first thing you said was, hello, I'm a small-c conservative. <laughs> I couldn't care less, love. <laughs> you did. You were putting words in my mouth. I think what's weird is yeah. that you seem to think that your views are so important that people must be informed <laughs> of them at first. That's, a, that's, that's totally it's, unfair. Firstly, yeah. I didn't um, say I struggled to get dates. Personally. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 it's very possible for me to get a date, uh, but I, I'm not dating at the moment, like I said. But um, no, what uh, what I think is interesting with what you've just said is, you know, I, I, I came into the room and someone said you're a Tory, and I said actually I don't identify as a Tory. I identify mm. as a small C conservative, um, and that's yeah, important. Small, mm. That's an important. <laughs> that's an important. <laughs> that's an, that's an, that's an important. But in your thing story, to note, because you... I, I didn't call myself a Tory in my article either. I have traditionally. But I, I wasn't. I wasn't talking about whether you're a Tory or not. I'm talking about the fact, and it would go if you know, wouldn't necessarily to be right-wing or Tory or anything, mm. that you walk into a room in these dates or in this party that you describe in the Times yeah. article and immediately start declaring well, which side of the fence you are. I didn't and I think that context. is what is the yeah, problem. Yeah, no, no, you're right. And I don't go in and introduce myself with my politics. I, yeah. I, I, I was limited, sadly, to only 800 words. In I'm afraid article. going up to someone and going, hello, I think J.K. Rowling is right, is probably quite off-putting, just because women, it's, yeah. it's quite self-indulgent. Yeah, it is, it is. I can give you the broader context. The broader context was this particular gentleman who was engaged to a man, a vicar, um, was telling me how they keep the, his, his, their sexuality secret from the vicar's congregation. Mm. So he was telling me that they're engaged, but they're not um, sharing their, the fact they're engaged with his congregation. And the hypocrisy of that made me cross, because I thought, by all means, be engaged, but don't hide it from a congregation mm. when you're supposed to be preaching the truth from the pulpit. Mm. So because of that, I was annoyed because of the hypocrisy, the perceived hypocrisy of this situation, which is why I then started probing into his politics. Well, mm. as fascinating as that is, do you not just think that the problem is that you put your politics before the chance to get to know somebody, that you want to frame it in that way? Well, hang on, can I frame yeah. it in a different way? Because actually I would say that it, Cut to the chase, right? You, if you if you tell someone, look, you're probably going to have a problem with my politics, yeah. so I'm going to be upfront with you and tell you from the off mm. that this is me, this is what mm. I'm about, and if you don't like it, well, you leave can it. lump it. But Jeff, don't you think it would be better for you to date a woman who is right wing? It just makes things easier. If you, like, for instance, if you want children, if you want to get married. All these things will be topics that come up. You know, if you're dating a, a left-wing woman, she's going to have a set of values that is not going to be in line with your values. Well, I did say again in my article that whilst I like intelligent discussion and debate, common values is important. Now, I don't know if I'm going to date again anytime soon, but mm -hmm. it is important to note that, yes, you do need shared values. Mm -hmm. But I'll give the example of, of my old housemate who I lived with in Bath, mm. who, who had different views to me, but we mm. could... We actually had the same values. The fundamental mm -hmm. core values were the same. She expressed it in different ways. She was a Remainer, I was a mm -hmm. Brexiteer. You know, that's not a make or... At, at one point for me, that was make or break. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought I couldn't perceive dating anyone who didn't um, believe in British sovereignty over um, being governed by the European mm -hmm. Union. But the point is... Um, so have, have you wouldn't have, have dated someone no, that wasn't ten Brexit? Ten years ago, probably not. But So I, aren't you guilty of the very thing you're accusing others of? Oh, I, I was, but that, that was ten years ago, or nine, eight years mm -hmm. ago. You know, I've, got, I've gone through massive growth in the last eight years in Good. lots of different ways. Yeah. You know, my, my dating life has changed, my romantic, uh, you know, my, my da dynamic with, with well, respect to Let's go back changed. to Benjamin then. So why do you think the left are so intolerant and why are you the poster boy of never kissing a Tory, for example? <laughs> you not when you have kissed a Tory, can I just say, <laughs> your first ever well, kiss was a Tory. Beggars can't a be choosers. Hypocrite, like Keir Starmer. <laughs> um, Ooh, yeah. For me, I have my friendship circle involves a massive variety of people with different views, which I think is actually quite unusual. So there's some truth in it mm. that people tend to silo themselves. But I don't think that's unique just to politics. Oh, I think on. people do that with other big cultural commonalities, mm. like race, for example. You know, that tends to be people mix among their own overwhelmingly. Mm. I, I don't think that... Well, look, it depends on what the view is. You know, if you're going up to someone and saying, oh, you know, I don't believe in trans people's human rights, then I can see why someone would think, actually, that, that feels like an affront to the way I see the world. Mm. And I think that's fine. But I, I think the idea that left-wing people uniquely 
have a problem with dating someone of a different politics. Is, is just not true. And I think the very fact that you put your politics first in these scenarios, as you described, illustrates true, that. I think yeah. that's, but I think that's partly true. But firstly, I don't put my politics first. But secondly, I, have you ever seen a will not date a socialist on yes. a dating app? Have you ever seen that? Before? No, I've never I've seen never it. I've never seen it. Whereas I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I won't. Never, never, never date all my money yeah, on I've dating apps that. all the time. Yeah. I see it all the time. And actually, I agree with what you said about getting your politics out there you know, straight off the bat. Yeah. One of the things that I actually say to people when I'm on dating apps, um, not the same one as William Rag, by the way, um, <laughs> is, is that I will say, I will be like, oh, by the way, I'm a Tory. Because it's quite clear, if you search my name in Google, what comes up. So you might as well just get it off your chest straight yeah. away. But actually, most of the time, it's not resulted in, the, in the conversation not that. continuing. So you're in a fortunate position, because you're a lefty. Your views fit the media and political culture in this country. I mean, I have a problem that I, I didn't interview on Good Morning Britain about saying there are 100 genders that's been watched 50 million times. Mm -hmm. And so on a number of times I've gone on dates and that's the very first thing they mention. <laughs> so they already know all my politics. But look, I, I just think that, you know, maybe take responsibility for yourself. Don't make these excuses. I have honestly never gone on a date and told someone that I vote Labour. I would, yeah. It just wouldn't occur to me that particular questions might naturally crop up, but telling them how I vote right. just would not be a big deal well, for on me. That note